The body is often likened to a machine, but it is so much more than that. It works 24 hours a day for decades without, for the most part, needing regular servicing or the installation of spare parts. My son uh, is a doctor now, but he was in medical school throughout the last many years, and and I was completely captivated by how, you know, when we'd meet and go to the pub or something, he would tell me all stuff about the body and how excited he was. And, and I just thought, it's so interesting that somebody could get that interested in the body. Simultaneously, it occurred to me that I really was in my 60s, I didn't know how I'm put together. I really felt like I had to have some idea of where my spleen is and what it does for me, all, all these organs inside me that have been keeping me alive for all these years. So it was just a, a long-standing urge to understand how, how we work. And how do we celebrate the glory of our existence? Well, for most of us, by exercising minimally and eating maximally. Think of all the junk you throw down your throat and how much of your life is spent sprawled in a near vegetative state in front of a glowing screen. Yet in some kind and miraculous way, our bodies look after us, extract nutrients from the miscellaneous foodstuffs we push into our faces, and somehow hold us together, generally at a pretty high level, for decades. Suicide by lifestyle takes ages. I mean, one of the challenges you always have is that things, things with scientific subjects are not automatically interesting to people like me who are not non-scientists. I mean, my starting point is that I am just just an average person. I, I knew no more nor less about the body than than you know most people would, which is for most of us very really very little. And um, you know, I mean, I could kind of name the organs, but I couldn't tell you anything about them. Most of them, what they do or you know, go into any detail about it. You know, I just start out from a position of complete ignorance and try to learn as much as I can, but I'm also constantly on the lookout for the stuff that's interesting. Our bodies are a universe of 37.2 trillion cells operating in more or less perfect concert, more or less all the time. An ache, a twinge of indigestion, the odd bruise or pimple is about all that in the normal course of things announces our imperfectibility. There are thousands of things that can kill us, slightly more than 8,000 according to the International Statistical Classification of Diseases and Related Health Problems compiled by the World Health Organization, and we escape every one of them but one. For most of us, that's not a bad deal. Well, I, I, I love doing it, and there's so many things about doing an audiobook, the reading it yourself, that I, I really enjoy doing it. It's a collaborative thing. You have a producer in the next booth who is urging you on and helping to guide you and, you know, helping you to create a, a really quite unique product, I mean, different from the written book. We are not perfect by any means, goodness knows. We get impacted molars because we have evolved jaws too small to accommodate all the teeth we are endowed with, and have pelvises too small to pass children without excruciating pain. We are hopelessly susceptible to backache. We have organs that mostly cannot repair themselves. If a zebrafish damages its heart, it grows new tissue. If you damage your heart, well, too bad. One of the things that I thought it was a terrific idea it was come up with by the audible people as a, as a suggestion of a way of you know, providing something more than just the book. And what, what they've done is gone out and interviewed a lot of people who have hearing or sound as part of their lives in some important way. For instance, there was a, a, a poor person who suffers from really bad tinnitus and, and her life has been you know, really disrupted by that. And then there are other people who study sounds or use it professionally, musicians and so on. And it adds an element to the book, which I, as a, you know, writing on the page, couldn't bring to it because, of course, you know, you can, you can inject sound into, you, you know, when, when it's an audio version, it has sound as a possibility. Every day, it has been estimated, between one and five of your cells turns cancerous and your immune system captures and kills them. Think of that, a couple of dozen times a week, well over a thousand times a year, you get the most dreaded disease of our age, and each time your body saves you. The focus of the book is not about the bad things that can happen to you, it's mostly a celebration of the body. It's looking, I really wanted it to be about how well the body looks after you and how well all these parts that are inside you how coordinated it is it is you know there's an immense amount of just chemical choreography going on with, within you every living moment of your life that allows you to move and think and breathe and and enjoy life and you don't have to you don't have to give any thought at all to the chemistry inside you you know you don't have to ever think about your lungs or your spleen or your liver and all the things they're doing for you but they are doggedly working away non-stop you know 24 hours a day every single day keeping you alive and allowing you to enjoy life without having to stop and think about it. The miracle of human life is not that we are endowed with some frailties, but that we aren't swamped with them. Don't forget that your genes come from ancestors who most of the time weren't even human. Some of them were fish. 
Lots more were tiny and furry and lived in burrows. These are the beings from whom you have inherited your body plan. You are the product of three billion years of evolutionary tweaks. We would all be a lot better off if we could just start fresh and give ourselves bodies built for our particular homo sapien needs. To walk upright without wrecking our knees and backs, to swallow without the heightened risk of choking, to dispense babies as if from a vending machine. But we weren't built for that. We began our journey through history as unicellular blobs floating about in warm, shallow seas. Everything since then has been a long and interesting accident, but a pretty glorious one too, as I hope the following pages make clear.